Lyme disease is an infection that's transmitted by ticks. It's common in Maryland in any of the areas where there are um, all the components that you need, which are ticks, deer, mice, and people all living in the same area. The disease is transmitted by ticks, and it's, it's a little bit of a different kind of a disease because it really has two phases. The initial phase or the early phase of Lyme disease happens a week or two after the tick bite. That's the phase people are familiar with. It has a rash, a febrile flu-like illness, and that phase lasts for weeks or even a month or so, and then if it's not recognized or not treated, it goes away on its own. But the problem with Lyme disease is if that early phase isn't recognized and treated, there's a second phase, a late phase, that happens months or even years later, and that late phase looks like a totally different disease. The early phase and the late phase are usually both treated the same way with uh, oral antibiotics, typically for adults, doxycycline, for children, amoxicillin. The only exception to that is if the neurologic, insist, uh, the neurologic system is involved, for instance, with early meningitis or later with late Lyme disease with a process called neuropathy. If those neurologic symptoms are involved, then it's treated with intravenous antibiotics. Not everybody who gets bitten by a tick gets Lyme disease. In fact, about 1 in 50 or 2% of people that get a tick bite will eventually get Lyme disease. So it's the minority of tick bites that actually transmit the disease. The best clue is the rash that appears a week to two weeks later. The rashes are typically not painful. They're typically not super itchy like somebody with poison oak, poison ivy. That's right. So if the rash is either small or inapparent, you may not see it. Then that accounts for the fact that only about 80% of people with early Lyme disease see the rash. Sometimes people never know they had the early phase of Lyme disease, and their very first encounter with a doctor is with an orthopedic person because they have a swollen knee. And that swollen knee is six or 12 months after the, the tick bite, and they don't even recall the tick bite. They don't recall the rash. All they know is that their knee's swollen up, and that's typically six or 12 months later. The risk factors for getting Lyme disease from a tick bite, the only one that's really well recognized is how long the tick is attached. So if you find a tick on you, you're observant, even though they're small, you see it, you get it off within 24 hours, that lowers the risk tremendously um, to get Lyme disease. So the one thing we do know is the sooner you get the tick off, the less likely it is to transmit Lyme disease. One of the big misconceptions is that Lyme disease is always a bullseye rash. In fact, it can be a bullseye rash, but it's often not a bullseye rash. It's often a round or oval uniformly red rash. And that's very important because I, I've had numerous patients that missed the opportunity to go to a physician and be diagnosed because they saw a round red rash and they said, well, it's round, it's red, it's getting bigger, but it's not a bullseye, so it can't be Lyme disease. That's clearly wrong. Uh, actually, the majority of the rashes aren't the typical bullseye. They're just a round oval red rash, single uh, that gets bigger uh, day by day. They typically last for several weeks. The two major ways to protect yourself is an awareness that when you're outdoors, you're potentially exposed to tick bites and that you should do your best to look for ticks and to remove them quickly. That being said, they're, because the ticks are so small, there are going to be tick bites you're going to miss. So I think even the more important line of defense is recognizing the rash.